Hello, 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 everyone. All right. I just want to make sure that I am live and everybody can hear me okay before I jump right in and chit chat with all of you. I love seeing we have so many people already here. Thank you so much for joining everybody. Hello, hello. All right. We've got Calgary and Florida and Pennsylvania and Michigan in Illinois. We got Las Vegas and Arizona. Awesome, awesome. Hello, everybody. Yay. I see familiar names and new names. That's always so fun. So as everybody is popping on, I know um, some of you guys probably tapped the little uh, bell to get a notification when we were live so they would get reminded to come join us. But as everybody is joining, I just want to say hello, everyone. Um, Jen Shirk is here. And sadly, I am solo tonight but not completely solo. I've got Rebecca and Shari behind the scenes. Um, they're gonna be in the comments helping answer any questions. Um, but unfortunately, Kelly could not make it tonight. Um, a lot of you guys know her dog, Daphne. Um, she's just having a little bit of health issues. She's okay, but uh, Kelly needed to be, you know, mama and stay home with Daphne tonight. So I hope you guys all understand um, and you'll still stick with me. We still have some really fun cards to create. Um, and, you know, I might have a couple sneak peeks to share with you. Uh, so definitely stick with me and we will definitely still have a ton of fun. Linda says she's not creating tonight, but she's wearing her Shirk merch. I love it. I'm wearing my Lawn Fawn gear. I figured I should, you know, tonight represent Lawn Fawn. Um, but I was wearing Shirk merch earlier. Um, hello from Brazil. Hello, Texas, California. Awesome, awesome. All right. Yeah, we still wanted to, uh, we still wanted to obviously host the live. And um, we definitely will miss Kelly, but she wanted to make sure that I said hi to all of you guys and to thank you guys uh, for joining me tonight. So let's go ahead and jump right into things as we do. Um, I'm just switching up my screen. There we go. Oh, you know what? Let's actually... Let's get a little bit fancier. I am gonna make sure that, there we go. We'll put make sure um, at the bottom of the screen, you guys will see there's the link to the Create With Us website on our page on Lawn Fawn's website. And that way, if you haven't already, you can download the handout tonight or for tonight's class. And on the handout, it's gonna have a picture of both of the cards that we're gonna be creating. And we're using So Very Nice. And it has all the supplies listed. And then also on the handout are the coloring guides, which I know you guys love these. And so that makes me so happy um, that you know, you're finding them useful. So you can definitely download that. And then maybe if this is your first Create With Us, um, you can go back and find all the details from all the past Create With Us classes as well. So tonight I am gonna be using Copic markers. Um, I always provide a little swatch list here um, so that you guys, if you're not using Copic markers, maybe you're using another alcohol-based marker, maybe you're using colored pencils, um, you can kind of swatch out your own colors um, and find similar colors, right? Um, so we're just using a few pinks, a few teals. We're going to do brown mice tonight, and then we're going to be using some grays. All right. Yay. I love it. I love it. 
Oh, I know, Lori. I know that shipping to Canada is expensive, and I'm sorry. I wish that there was something I could do about that. But maybe, maybe you should just ask all of your family and friends for a gift card to my website, and then you can put that towards the shipping, and you can order some Shark March. <laughs> all right. So we are going to dive right into our Copic coloring. And so I shared on the handout, and I always share how I like to add my images to some low-tech tape. Um, I use Spellbinder's Best Ever Craft Tape. It's so funny. I'm actually almost done my first roll, you guys. And I think you know how much I use this tape. So it lasts a really, really long time. Um, and so I just attach all my little images to the low tech tape and that way I have a little bit more real estate to hold on to when I am coloring. And then after this class, this low tech tape will become the tape that I use to hold my stamps and dies in place when I am die cutting. Um, so yes, it gets used pretty much until it disintegrates. <laughs> um, sometimes I'm laughing at myself because I'm like, why am I still using this piece of tape that's crumbling? I can I can treat myself to a new piece. Um, all right. Hello, Wanda. It's always good to see you. Let's see. Yay. Katie is sharing that impressive ideas, which I know is a store in Georgia. They are doing so, S-E-W, many activities, classes in two weeks with the same lawn fawn goodies. So she's going to be the ex expert by then. I love that. Speaking of um, brick and mortar stores, you guys, hopefully you are all subscribed to Lawn Fawn's email newsletter. If you're not subscribed to Lawn Fawn's email newsletter, I know that Shari or Rebecca will pop a link in the comments for you. You want to make sure that you subscribe tonight. Because tomorrow, uh, Lawn Fawn has a big surprise to share with you guys. They're kind of in cahoots with um, some stores that are part of Air and Crafters Home, which are brick and mortar stores, and it's going to be so much fun, and you don't want to miss it. So make sure you guys are getting Lawn Fawn's email newsletter, not just for tomorrow, but for all kinds of fun announcements, like when our next Create With Us will be, and all kinds of fun, fun happenings. All right. So we are going to jump right in and start to color our little mice. So I have my coloring guides here, which are good because I colored these mice a long time ago. And I always try to switch up my coloring guides. So I am also going to be teaching an online class called So Amazing. And we are going to be using some of the same supplies that we're using in tonight's free class. So if you want to learn some more and get some more ideas with the supplies that you already have and the coloring guides will be different. So that's why I like to always make sure I'm checking out my coloring guides as I'm teaching you guys tonight because I want to make sure that I am following them along correctly. So we're going to be coloring the little mice. And um, again, we've got lots of fun mice um, in Lawn Fawn land. And so I switch it up. Sometimes I do brown mice, sometimes I do gray mice. But today I thought the cards are a nice warm color coloring. Um, so I'm going to stick with the uh, brown, brown mice tonight. So I'm going to be using some really light brown, some E33, and some E21, okay? Uh, Michelle's asking, do we know what time the surprise release will be tomorrow? Um, I don't know if there's an exact time, Michelle, but I would just watch your email newsletter. I don't think work will get in the way. I think you'll be okay. All right, so I'm going to zoom in because we've got our little, little mice. And so I like to start with the darkest marker first. And I'm actually going to put the shadow on all of my mice first. And then we'll go back and we will blend. So the darker brown that I'm using is E33. 
And we've got this little mouse with the thimble on his head, which I love him. I think he's so cute. So I'm going to add a little shadow right under that thimble along the back ear. Coming up that front ear. Oops. We're going to go under his chin. And then we'll go up between his front feet along that back side and up his back feet, okay? And then we have two mice that are facing right and we're gonna shadow both of them the same way. So I'm gonna just kinda do a half moon on the left side of the face coming up into the ears and along the arm. And then we're gonna come down along his little tush, his little bum along his belly, between his legs, a little bit on the left side of his right leg. And then on this right arm, I'm coming under his chin and then I'm kind of just diagonally going so I come to the bottom of that right arm, okay? And, <coughs> excuse me, I am gonna shadow the next mouse exactly the same. And I often get asked, you know, how do I decide where to shadow? <clears throat> Excuse me, let me take a sip of water. Um, so the way that I decide where to shadow is I tend to choose one side or the other. So I choose left or right. And with this mouse here that's facing to the right, I don't want to shadow the face because that's kind of a focal point. So I'm going to shadow the left side. So I chose my side, you know, one side or the other, I chose the left side. And then beyond that, I choose crevices. So here I'm going under his chin for some crevices. We're gonna go between his legs and we just kind of follow that rule of thumb. I try to keep it pretty easy. I don't overcomplicate it too much when I'm deciding where to shadow, all right? Ooh, good morning from Australia, Nicole. Thanks for joining us. And speaking of these mice, I mean, Shari, Rebecca, and I were just chatting before I, we came on live. And I got to tell you guys, I always say, like, in my next life, I want to be one of my kitties. Um, for those of you that don't know, I have three kitties, and they are spoiled, as they should be. Um... But now I'm kind of beginning to think I just want to be like a lawn fawn mouse when I come back because these little mice literally live their best life ever. Um, and a little sneaky peek that I get to share with you that Kelly said would be okay is they're going to continue to live their best life in the May release. So stay tuned for that. So we just shadowed the little mouse that's facing to the right. And now we are going to add some shadow to this guy that's holding the embroidery hoop. I'm just making sure that I bring this up so I'm looking at it. Oh, here he is. I'm like, I don't have him on the coloring guide. I do. Phew. I thought I might have forgotten. All right. So for the guy holding the embroidery hoop, we're going to do his whole back arm here. A little bit at the base of his ears. Again, we're going to do a half moon on the right side because he's facing the left. We'll go under the chin, the bottom of the right arm, and then again, we're going to keep shadowing the right. So we'll go along his right side, a little bit between his legs, and the right side of his left foot. Okay? Yes, they have so many hobbies, these mice. They're busy, busy little mice. All right, and then I'm going to do a little shadow on the right side of this guy with the embroidery hoop. Busy stitching, and then we'll go along the right side of its body, under the chin, and a little bit up into the arm. All right. So now we have all of our mice shadowed. And so if you are coloring with alcohol-based markers, um, alcohol does evaporate quickly. 
So once we start blending, we want to do just one image at a time, but just to lay down the shadow. I do this often when I'm teaching um, just because it does kind of help speed up the process a little bit. So, um, so when I'm teaching, I just like to kind of have us do all the shadows at once. And now we can concentrate on blending these guys out. All right. Yay. Thanks for joining those of you that are popping in. And if you're watching the replay, we appreciate you watching the replay as well. Uh, make sure you give the video a little thumbs up if you don't mind. That will help other people find this video. And I know in the um, caption of the video, um, there is a link as well to the handout. I know that uh, Shari and Rebecca have been linking it really well. And then there also is a link to all of my online classes. There's a lot of lawn fawn options over there. All right, so now I'm going to blend out with E21. So these, both these colors are pretty light and browns are pretty easy to blend. But when I start to blend, I am just concentrating right where I put the E33, the darker brown, and I'm just extending that shadow a little bit. I'm not filling in all the areas with color yet because we do want to try to keep some areas white because those are going to might be our truest light area. Um, with any alcohol-based markers, the more layers you color, the darker that color is going to become. So that's why I like to leave whatever I want to be my true lightest version um, I keep it white, so you can see right here, the front legs and the right left side of his face are completely white, the tip of his ear here as well, um, because what I'm going to do now is I'll take this E21, the light brown that I'm using, and I'm going to color it in with just one layer of marker, and I don't want to keep going over and over and over it again, um, because it's going to get darker and darker. But you also can see here where I've blended the two colors together, so it's pretty thick, um, the shadow, and you don't see a line from the previous marker anymore. So I'm just going to go ahead, fill in, okay? If there is any awkward lines, you can kind of just brush that color out in between those two areas. And something I've been doing a lot lately um, is I sometimes go right back in with my dark marker um, while my cardstock is pretty damp, it's saturated, and I just add a little bit of definition back in. Um, you usually don't even need to blend that out because your cardstock is damp enough that it kind of starts to seep in on its own. So what I've actually been doing is kind of coloring with both my markers uncapped. Um, and I've found this to be really nice and easy. So I'm going to move along and we're going to do one mouse at a time now that we're doing our blending because we don't want to make more work for ourselves. Um, alcohol evaporates quickly. So if you're trying to do too big of an area or too many images at once, it's just going to make more work for you. And you're going to kind of use up your ink more because you're going to be constantly working on saturating that cardstock to get things to blend together. But here is that little guy. He's all blended up. And then I'm going to finish filling in with one layer. Thank you guys so much for all the sweet comments for Kelly and her dog, Daphne. Um, I know that Rebecca is going to talk to her first, so I'm sure she's going to share share that with her. And I'm sure she's feeling feeling the love, so thank you. I know many of us are animal lovers. We all have our pets that we love so much. And it's hard when our pets are sick because they can't tell us what's wrong, you know. So sometimes it's hard to uh, figure out what's going on. My kitty, Mr. Harley, who a lot of you guys know, sometimes you hear him because he starts hunting when I'm teaching. His 15th birthday is tomorrow. 
And we had a little bit of a health scare with him before the holidays. So um, I'm super grateful that he's feeling good. And I promised him we're having beautiful weather here on Cape Cod right now. So I promised him, even though I'm very busy this week getting ready to go on vacation, I promised him a little stroller walk tomorrow. Last fall, I got him a stroller and he just loves, loves, loves going around the neighborhood in his little stroller. It's like his best day ever. All right. I'm just going back in with my E33 and just adding just a touch, like pretty much like where I first put the dark brown, I do like a quarter of that when I go and I add any more dimension back in. Okay. And you can see the difference. See the difference on the mouse on the right versus this one? I didn't put any more um, definition back in. All right. Just peeking up at the comments. Um, yes. Dee Dee says she's obsessed with this collection. Um, if she's talking about the mice, I totally hear you. You guys love all your little lawn fawn mice. They're so popular. Um, and why not, right? They have so much fun. So much fun. All right. So I'm just blending out this next little guy. And then I'm going to finish filling in one layer. I'm using that E21, the light, light brown. And I'm just going to go in and dab in a little definition. So Lawn Fun has a new release coming out. Um, well, we have a surprise tomorrow. And then we have a new release coming out um, mid-May. I meant to look at the date before I came on live, but um, I know Rebecca or Shari will be able to tell me. I think it's the third Thursday of May. Um, and so that's going to be fun. Can't wait. Thank you. May 18th. And um, so we will have another create with us. We haven't planned when it will be, but we'll make sure that we announce it. And I always make sure that my handout and the supply list is all available on release day. So on that May 18th, you can go to the create with us page on Lawn Fawn's website and find all the details of what the next mini class, what we're going to be using. Um, that might kind of help you decide what you might want to purchase if you want to play along with us. Um, but of course, these Create With Uses, you can also just come for the chit chat. You don't have to feel like you always have to be creating with us. But we're just trying to give you lots of options to hopefully inspire you and give you ideas with the supplies that you guys are purchasing. Um, so we will, we'll come up with another date for that. And then we have a summer release that will be coming out um, late June. So lots of fun stuff coming up. Lots of very cute stuff coming up. I promised Kelly I wouldn't break any rules and share too, too much. You know, her being one of the owners of the company, she gets a little more, a little bit more leeway. But I just know you guys are going to love it. I'm always fond of the summer release because those of you that don't know, summer is my favorite season. So it's usually filled with cuteness that I enjoy. All right. So now that we are just about done blending out these mice, I'm going to cap up my markers. Yay. Beth says that she loves that the handouts are ready at release day in time for ordering. Thank you, Beth. I try so hard to get that stuff done. And the Lawn Fawn crew is awesome at updating the website in time. Oh, I love it. Cynthia is going to be doing, is working on baking and strawberry mice tonight. I love that, Cynthia. Make sure if you guys do post your cards or whatever you're working on tonight, maybe you're just coloring. Um, if you're sharing on social media, 
make sure you use the hashtag LF create with us. And then that way we get to see what you're creating. And uh, feel free to also tag me, tag Lawn Fawn. We love to see uh, what you guys are working on. So we don't have an exact date for the next Create With Us, Vivian, uh, but we will for sure um, announce it when the release is um, in May. Uh, Tracy says, is there a hint on when or what the new release is going to be? Little mice going swimming. Those are question marks. Well, I already hinted that, you know, the mice might be living their best life in the next release. Um, and if you like things that fly, you also might like the next release. Awesome. We got hanging out, organizing our craft room. That's awesome. Yes. Yeah, so May 18th is a mini release and the summer release is at the end of June. Love it. Love it. All right. So now that my mice are colored, what I like to do is go in with a little light pink. So I'm actually going to be using RV10. And some of the mice have their little belly showing. So I'm also going to grab my E00. Okay. And so for RV10, what I'm going to do um, is all of their noses. Just a little dab of pink. And I'm going to do their inner ears. I kind of just swipe up from the base and I leave a little touch of white in their ears. But you can color them completely too. It looks cute no matter what. And then um, the mice that have bellies that are showing, what I did is, so we've got the mouse that, you know, is facing to the left. What I did is I'm going to kind of do a thin line of this RV10 on the left side. And then I'm going to take this E00 and I'm just going to kind of dab over the RV10. It's taking a little bit of that pink away and kind of making it, um, like a pinky brown and it just doesn't look so like glowy pink. Um, so that's what I kind of like to do with their bellies. There's so many different ways that you could do this and I switch it up, but this I thought was kind of fun, especially if you're using alcohol markers or if you're watercoloring, layering the two colors like this. And once the alcohol evaporates or your watercolor dries, it looks a lot nicer too because it doesn't look as wet. Okay. Then we've got this guy holding the hoop. We're going to go down along his belly, RV10, and then I'm going over it with E00. And then the last thing I'm going to do um, is I am going to rosy their cheeks. And I do like to wait a minute before I rosy their cheeks so that the alcohol has evaporated from my coloring of the mice. But I'm going to take RV10 and I'm just going to dab their little cheeks. And if you're using alcohol-based markers, be gentle to the tip of your markers. But just do a couple dabs until they get as pink as you want them. And I love a good rosy cheek. This just makes me so happy. I think it just makes the little mice like kind of come alive. And so I'm just working my way down and dabbing each of their cheeks. So cute. If, the, if, if their cheek is in a shadow, you might have to dab it a few extra times uh, to get that pink to overpower the shadow, but I just think it looks super, super cute. Now I'm going to take my white gel pen. I just like the Sakura or Sakura Jelly Roll um, white gel pen, and I'm just going to dab a little circle on those rosy cheeks. Kelly and I have often talked about white gel pen details during Create With Us. Um, 
And it's neither her nor I's strong point. It's not something I am the best at, but I do like to add some little details here and there. And then I always love to look at the design team members who are really great with using a white gel pen and adding details and see how they use them as inspiration. But I'm just adding a little dot in the center where I did the RV10. Super cute. All right. Good, good, good. I'm just making sure I am not um, missing any questions. I see some of you are trying to guess what the mice are going to be doing in the mini release. My lips are sealed, but you're going to love it. It's super cute. Hi, Lisa. So my friend Lisa's just popped in. She's actually working on some kits for my upcoming Creative Journey Art Retreat. So thank you, Lisa. Um, let's see. Uh, thank you so much, you guys, for the sweet comments about coloring. All right. <laughs> All right. So now let's go ahead. We can continue with our browns. And we'll go ahead and do our embroidery hoop. So for the outside of the embroidery hoop, I am just using the, um, oh, I actually used E23. But you could use your E33 as well. I just try to switch up the browns so things look a little different. Um, but so I'm going to use E23. And I'm just going to do the frame of the embroidery hoop. It might have a special name. This is where I should have talked to Shari beforehand and had her tell me all the terms for stitching. Um, but it's the frame of the embroidery hoop is what I'm calling it. And that's what I'm sticking to. And you're welcome, you guys, for doing these classes. We love offering these for you. And I'm glad that you are finding them helpful. And if you're looking for more ideas and you want to build upon the supplies that we're using tonight or most of the Create With Us classes, I have coordinating online classes for those as well. All right, so I just did the frame of the embroid both embroidery hoops with the E23. And now I'm going to take that E00, that really light color that we used on their bellies, and I'm just going to kind of trace the inside of this hoop just to give it a little shadow, a little color to it so it doesn't look so flat. And then the embroidery hoop that the uh, mouse is already stitching on, I'm going to just kind of go up around this inner circle. And then the little crease lines where, you know, the fabric is kind of folded, it's cinched under that embroidery hoop. I'm just tracing those lines with this E00. So it's subtle, but it really does add a little something, something to the embroidery hoops. All right. Tracy says, come to San Diego for some classes. So I actually have taught in San Diego. I taught at Paper Tales a few times when they were open, um, but um, Lon Fawn and me and Rebecca, we are going to be all part of um, a Lon Fawn event put on by It's, an, it's Always an Adventure, um, Lori's company. She is hosting a really fun weekend of Lon Fawn classes and make and takes, and you get to go to Lon Fawn headquarters. Um, and that's coming up in September. So, and that's in Southern California. Um, and so Lynn's asking if I've ever come to the West Coast of Canada. I had a plan to teach at Clipper Street in um, May of 2020. <laughs> and we all know how that went. So I actually used to travel all over North America and teach 25 to 30 weekends a year before the pandemic. So, and I'm starting to work in some in-person teaching um, again. Um, 
but I'm also just doing a whole lot of really fun stuff online as well, which is really great because it's available for anybody and it doesn't have to work into your schedule. You can take the classes whenever, whenever it fits into your own schedule and they've just been a blast. It's been so much fun. All right. Oh, awesome. We've got somebody who just signed up for the uh, Lawn Fawn event in September, right after the last Create With Us, and she's dragging her non-crafty sister. I love it. Hook her in. Yay. All right. So I am going to start to color uh, my thimbles and my scissors and things like that. I'm gonna be using the toner grays. Um, so I'm using a dark gray, a medium gray, and a light gray. But you can use any grays that you would like. I love the warm gray, the warm grays as well. I've just really been loving the toner grays because they have a little bit of a cool feel to them, but I find them so much easier to blend than the cool grays. Um, and so yeah, so we're going to start uh, by coloring the thimbles, okay? So I'm going to start with T6, which is a really, really dark gray. And I'm going to zoom back in so you guys can see. Um, and because this gray is very, very dark, I only want a little bit of it. I don't want a lot. So I'm just going to do a thin line right above the rim of the thimble, okay? And while we're coloring the thimble on the mouse, let's go ahead and color our single thimble as well, because it's gonna be the same way, okay? And then I am going to take my T4. So this is gonna be my medium gray. And what I'm gonna do is go right over where I did that T6. And having that little bit of T6, that really dark gray underneath, just kind of helps make a nice richness to the color and really gives some really, really good uh, definition, okay? And then I'm gonna take that T4 and just kind of pull the color up into that thimble a little bit. And the rim of the thimble, I'm going to just do a very thin line, a T4, right near where the T6 was. So you can see there's still a little bit of white there, and then the top of the thimble is still white, okay? So I'm going to take my lightest gray, the T2, and I'm going to fill in what's left on the rim and fill in what's left on the top of the thimble. All right, all right, and so now we've got our second thimble. I'm gonna do the same exact thing. I'm gonna first swipe my medium gray, my T4, right over where I did the T6. And then I am, oops, and then I'm gonna pull the color up. And I'm gonna take that marker and do a very thin line on the rim of the thimble trying to leave a little bit of white. And then I am going to fill the rest of this in with the T2. So you could definitely just do it with two colors, but adding that T6 in just, again, just adds so much more um, definition, okay? All right. So now, let's see, while we have our grays out, let's go ahead and do the tips of our scissors, the metal of our scissors. So we're going to use um, T6 and T2, so just two grays, the darker gray and the lighter gray. I'm going to start with the T6. And on my scissors, I'm going to do the bottom of this top part. And then we're going to do the top of the bottom part. I know that might sound confusing, but 
I don't know what else to call it. So we're doing the bottom of the top blade and the top of the bottom blade. If you're holding them the same way that I am. Yeah, the toner grays blend so nice. I actually started using them when we had the Toucan um, set come out. I don't think it was last summer. I think it was the summer before. It all starts to blur together a little bit in Lawn Fawn Land. But I started using them then because I wanted a little bit of a cooler gray. I love my warm grays, but I wanted the birds to be a bit cooler. And... Um, I was just so surprised at how much easier they blended than the cool grays. I fight with those cool grays all the time. All the time. <laughs> all right. Michelle's asking if there'll be other critters in the May release besides mice. Um, maybe. All right. Awesome. Tracy says you're going to come to something, but I'm not quite sure what you're coming to. Maybe the uh, event in Southern California in September. Um, what's the metal piece at the tip of your Copic pen? What's the metal piece? Oh, it's just part of my nib. I have the brush nibs in my Copic Originals, which are the square barreled markers, and it's just part of my nib. All right. All right. So now what else is gray? I'm looking at my coloring guides. I can't, um, I guess it's the lids of the buttons. So we'll do the big lid, the big jar lid. I actually really love to color this lid. I don't know why. I just find it so fun. And so this jar is an older stamp set. Um, I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you guys can see, but it's the How You Bean um, stamp set. And this has been out for quite a while. You can see how loved mine is. But as Lawn Fawn does such a great job, they have all kinds of fun add-ons of things you can put in your jar. And I love, love, love that. So we're going to have buttons in our jar um, tonight. But so I'm going to start to color the lid. I'll zoom back in just a little bit. And so I'm going to start with that T6, the really dark gray. And whenever I have something that has a curve to it, like a jar, um, I like to make sure I'm shadowing the left side and the right side. So I'm bringing this T6 from the left side in. Okay, and then I like to turn it because I find it much easier to pull towards myself. But some people, um, I think Kelly finds it easier for her to kind of push away. So whatever motion makes sense for you. Remember, your paper can move around so you're not fighting with it. And so you can see I just shadowed a little bit on the left and the right. Now, this um, threaded detail on the lid, I'm going to finish coloring that whole strip in with T6. Okay, that really dark gray. Then I'm going to go ahead and take the medium gray, the T4, and I'm going to do pretty much what I just did. I'm going to pull the color towards me on the edge of the T6, the dark gray, bringing the color in some more. I do want to make sure I leave a little bit of white in the center, so I don't want to come in too, too much. Spin the lid and pull towards me again. So you can see how I have this kind of highlight down the center-ish of the lid. So now I'm going to take my T2. Okay, blend that out and smooth it all out, okay? 
And then looking at my coloring guide, what I did last is I took T8, which is a really, really dark gray, and I am just tracing those, they're not thread lines, but just kind of like those crease lines on the jar. Just a little trace to just kind of bring some definition in. Ooh, I would love a seagull family into the Lawn Fawn Critter Land. I actually really, I think seagulls kind of get a bad rap. I spend a lot of time at the beach in the summer. I'm a part-time mermaid in the summer. And I actually really like to watch seagulls. They're actually really, really smart, smart birds. But I love osprey. Those are my favorite birds to watch in the summer. And we have, at the beach that we go to, we have an osprey nest right there. And so it's so fun to watch them um, hunting and looking for fish and teaching their babies to fly. I have so much fun watching them. And they just started showing up around here again because they migrate in the winter. So that's been really, really fun. All right, before we put our grays away, even though I just put my grays away, uh, let's add a little bit of gray to our sewing machine. And so I'm going to use T4 and T2. Really simple, this little top bobbin knobby thing. I don't so remember, guys, but I'm going to color that all T4. And then the dial on the right-hand side of the um, sewing machine, I'm just going to do a thin line of T4. And then the rest of it, I'm going to fill in with T2, just to put a little definition into that. All right, I think that is all we've got for grays. Hopefully I didn't forget anything. If I did, it's not like we can't pull our markers uh, back out. All right. Ooh, yeah, popcorn in the jar would be super cute, Tiffany. Hopefully, I know Rebecca always writes down ideas that we come up with during these, so that would be really, really fun. Yeah, blue herons. Those are fun to watch. We have those as well. Love it. I see that Lan Fong commented. They did link the um, Always an Adventure um, Facebook account for that event that we'll be teaching at in Southern California in September. I do know that that event is almost sold out. So if that's something that you were thinking of doing, make sure you do that sooner than later. Oh my gosh, Beth, I hope you post your card. She said she made her jar a shaker and put real buttons in it. I can't wait to see it. Awesome, awesome. All right. Hello, Scrappy Chic. Nice to see you pop on here. All right, let's go ahead and color all the pink things. We've got a lot of pink going on, a lot of pink. So I'm going to be using R81, R83, and R85. So we've got three pink colors. Michelle said, I hope Rebecca wrote down merry-go-round for our critters. I love it. So fun. So I'm going to start with the sewing machine since this is what I have right in front of me right now. And that's what we were just kind of coloring. So let's go ahead and start with R85. And I am going to do the um, stripe detail of that, all R85. And then what I did is kind of a thin line below the stripe and a thin line above the stripe because we're going to start to kind of build a shadow, okay? And then the front dial, I'm going to do just kind of a U, a little U at the bottom of the dial. And then we have this little plate below that circle. I'm going to just color all of that R85. And then the base of the sewing machine, I'm going to do all of that, R85. And I'm going to do just a thin line above the base. 
So what's so funny is, so this sewing machine is also part of an older set, super cute set, uh, sewn with love. And as you can see, also really well loved. Um, but I think almost every time I use this stamp, I color it this pinky color with the R80s. Once in a while, I'll make a teal sewing machine, but I don't know what it is. I almost always color it the same way. It's just kind of where my brain goes. But so now I'm going to take that R83 and we are just going to swipe some of that R83 on the edge wherever we did the R85. It's going to blend together very easily. Um, because these are pretty easy colors to blend together and they're not drastically different from one another. Okay. And then we are going to take our R81, that lightest pink. And I first like to just blend the edge so we don't see a line from the previous color. I don't worry about coloring it all in. I work, worry about blending first. And you can see how I'm turning and twisting my image around so that coloring is easier for myself. And then whatever is left white, I'm going to go ahead and finish filling it in with one layer of this color. And I just realized we forgot to add gray to the little part that the needle comes down from, but we can do that real quick. Super cute, right? So we have the little part that the needle comes down from. And so we're going to do T4 and T2, really similar to like what we did on that side dial. I'm going to take the T4 and do a thin line at the top. And then just finish filling it in with T2. Joanne says she almost always makes her sewing machine teal. You would think that that is what I would do, Joanne, since teal is my favorite color. But for some reason, I just always make it pink. And not just pink, it's always these R80 colors. It's so funny. I just think it's, I just was thinking about that. Okay, let's go ahead and do our pin cushion. So for our pin cushion, I'm going to start with R85. And the whole top part of the pin cushion um, is going to be R85. And then a few of the lines, um, or actually all the lines, we're just going to trace those. And then underneath this top part of the pin cushion, I'm kind of adding some R85 so we'll have a little bit of a shadow. Okay. I will zoom in even more for you guys. I love that I can zoom in so you can see what I'm doing as long as I pay attention and stay on screen, right? Um, all right. <laughs> Beth says that she remembers a pink mixer from one of my classes, so I must be into pink appliances. <laughs> I want to own a KitchenMade mixer just to have a teal KitchenAid mixer, but I literally never want to use it. I, I am not very... I'm not very into baking and cooking at all, so it would literally just be decorating my kitchen with some teal. All right, so I just blended those edges with R83, and then I'm going to go ahead and finish blending with R81, and then whatever is left will get filled in with one layer of R81. I, I actually really love how easy these pinks are to blend. They blend together so easily. We'll do our pins in a little bit. Those are going to be teal, so we'll wait on that. Um, let's go ahead and do our scissors. 
Um, we have one pair of scissors that are going to be pink and one pair of scissors that are going to be teal. So um, just keep that in mind. But for our pink scissors, I'm going to come out from that top blade into the top loop. And then that boxy part of the scissors, I'm going to just trace that with R85. <coughs> Carrie says that her husband calls the KitchenAid mixer the most expensive whipped cream maker. <laughs> I love it. All right. And now I'm going to take, oh, not R83. I'm going to take R81, the very light pink. Just a few little dabs on the edges of the R85 to just get those edges to soften and blend. And then fill in whatever is left with that R81. Okay. All right. Let's look at um, our thread bobbins. I'm just trying to see how many. Looks like we've got two pink and two teal. So what I did, um, we'll do the, the wooden part of the thread in just a minute. But um, for now, let's go ahead and do the thread part. And this is super easy. Two of them, you're going to just color all of it R81. And then I'm going to take the R85 marker. And you want to have a very gentle hand so you can get a nice thin. And I just kind of trace those thread lines. Doesn't have to be completely done. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just a little trace to add some definition. Okay, and then um, our ribbon is going to be teal. I'm just looking at my samples to make sure, make sure I keep on point. All right, let's go ahead and do our buttons. So, huh, so, um, so we've got three big buttons here, and two of them are going to be pink. So for the two pink buttons, I'm going to start with R85 and I'm just kind of doing a U, kind of like a half moon at the bottom of the button. And you can go ahead and do it on both of them. You'll be able to turn the button however you want it on your card. So right now it doesn't really matter where the shadow is at all, right? And then I'm going to take my light, light pink, my R81. I'm going to soften the edges and then I'll finish filling in the button with one layer of color. Go ahead and go right over those buttonholes because we're going to color those gray so you don't have to worry about avoiding them. Makes the coloring a whole lot easier. Soften the edge and then fill in one layer. All right. I'm going to grab my T4 marker. Any of the grays will work. And I'm just going to kind of fill in those buttonholes. All right. Then we have our two medium buttons are teal and our baby button is teal. So we're all set. All right. So let's go to our small button jar. You guys are having a blast chatting about ideas for the mice and for lawn fawn sets. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, let's see. <laughs> Shari said, if I get a teal kitchen aid, we can make cookies in September her and her husband, Matt, are going to visit in September, but I don't want to be baking cookies, Shari, in September. I want to show you Boston and Cape Cod. Okay, 
So we've got our baby button jar here. So what's going to be pink on this is the label and the lid. So we'll go ahead and start with R85. And on the label, I'm just going to do a thin line along the left, along the bottom, and up the right. And on the lid of the jar, I am just going to do a thin line on this seam. Okay, and that's all with the darkest pink, the R85. Then I'm going to take R83 and I'm going to blend the edge. Try to leave white on the lid. I know it's getting to be a smaller area, but try to leave some white. And then we're going to finish off the label and the lid with R81. Okay, cute, cute, cute. All right, the last bit that we have to do pink is our big buttons. And so, I keep saying so and I'm laughing because it sounds like I'm trying to be punny and I'm not. Um, okay, so on our buttons, some are gonna be pink and some are going to be teal and so we are going to start by adding the shadow on the pink buttons. <laughs> Shari says, so you want me to just bring you some cookies and you can decorate them after I leave. Yep. Or I could just eat them and not decorate them at all. Although I am obsessed with watching people decorate cookies. Hello, Holly. Thanks for popping in. I mostly do two color blends as well, Michelle. It's actually really odd for me to be doing three colors. I must have been in a mood. Um, oh, yeah. Rebecca just said that Shari can go to California and they can make cookies in Kelly's kitchen. I'm trying to get Shari to be able to come out when we're there in September, but I think that might be a lot of travel time in September. All right, so I'm gonna take R85 and we are gonna do the shadow on the pink buttons. And how about you guys either peek at the coloring guide or see which buttons I'm making pink pink because it's gonna be really hard for me to explain which button I'm working on. But there we go. We've got four pink buttons. Okay. And we're coloring them just like we did our single buttons. So I did the shadow with the R85. And then I'm going to blend out with R81. And then fill in with one layer of R81. So I'm not using that middle um, pink anymore because I really just wanted these buttons to be a bit lighter in color. Um, but I wanted the shadow to be nice and defined. So that's why I used a really dark color and a really light color. Can't get away with that all the time because it might be hard to blend, but these colors blend together so nicely that it just works. And that's all things that you learn the more that you color and you kind of remember which color combos um, you like and which ones work and, and all of that. All right, let me put some of my markers away. I wanted to, um, I was just going to peek. Okay, yeah, I'm going to put a few of my markers away. I think we're done with the pinks. I think, I think, I think. Um, and I still have a whole lot of browns out. So let me get up, get these off my table. I always try to be so much cleaner 
when I'm teaching live versus like when I'm actually crafting on my own. All right, let's get the good colors out, you guys. Let's get our teals out. So we are going to take out BG13, BG11, and then we are going to quickly use our BG10. Yes, Shari, you should take your whole entire month of September off. That's what I think. I think Rebecca will agree. All right, real quick with our BG10, I am just going to inline this button jar. And I'm going to go pretty thick with my color. It's going to look very blue at first, but when the alcohol evaporates, it's not as drastic. But this is just going to give it a little bit of a hint of blue to kind of make it look like glass. Very, very simple. <laughs> Mary says that uh, Shari works hard. She enjoys a month off. I agree. I agree. All right. So let's go ahead and continue with our big buttons. So um, we're going to do the same thing, shadow and then blend. So I'll go ahead and shadow uh, my buttons. And I'm basically choosing if they're on the front layer, I'm shadowing them at the bottom. If they're tucked behind a button, I'm kind of shadowing wherever they're touching a button. Um, but again, you can also just kind of watch, watch where I put my shadow and follow along. I love this color combo. I think it's a really pretty one, the pink and teal. Okay. And now I'm going to go ahead and blend out with BG11 and fill in with BG11. So I work at blending one button. And then once that edge is softened, I'll fill in with one layer. And again, I chose a dark and a light so that it stays pretty light. It just has that nice little bit of definition. But it also blends together pretty quickly. Okay. And I know we have talked, we do talk, and we have talked a lot about coloring with alcohol based markers in these Create With Us classes. And I love answering your questions and sharing as much as I can. Um, I'm very, very excited that I just announced um, this weekend registration for my online Copic coloring class. It will work. Um, I think you'll get a lot of knowledge no matter what brand alcohol-based markers you use. Um, it's going to be on, an online class. The online live version is May 6th but you can take it whenever it works in your schedule and you're actually going to get a workbook. So as much as I love to color lawn fawn images, I don't want anybody to feel like they have to have specific, um, specific stamp sets to be able to take the class. So um, a workbook will be mailed to you and we will all be coloring along on the same images. All right. Yeah, everybody's going to join in. Well, Paula, you have to sign up for the um, the event that It's Always an Adventure is hosting. Yay. <laughs> BG13 is always a color that you have to buy a refill for. I don't think I've ever gone through a whole BG13 refill yet. All right, we've got our baby buttons here that are in the jar, and I basically just colored some of them all BG11 and some of them all BG13. So again, you can kind of look at the coloring guide or watch me as I color. I pretty much was just trying to make them so that they alternated. And then whatever buttons are left, I'm going to color with BG13. I 
So Laura says that she's new to card making and she wants to purchase um, some Copics, but she's confused about which style to get sketch or original or chow. Um, and I will say, Laura, I do think it's a personal preference and it wouldn't hurt to buy a couple, um, you know, two colors that blend together that are sketch, two colors that are original and two colors that are chow. And you can get a feel for them because they won't go bad and they all work the same. So you'll still be able to have them. Um, you also could check out my blog post on my website. Um, if you just go to shirkus.com and look up my Copic 101 blog post, I shared the differences in the three markers and that might be able to help you make a decision as well. But it really is a personal preference. And until you try coloring with all three, I think it's going to be hard for you to make that decision, honestly. Um, so if a friend has the different styles or what have you. All right, we've got our thread here. We're going to do the same exact thing. We're going to color all BG11. And then we're going to do thin lines of BG13. I have to have a very light hand to do this, which is something I have to really concentrate to be able to do because I'm very heavy handed. Okay. Then we have our scissors. We're going to shadow these the same way, but this time with the BG13. You're welcome, Laura, and feel free to reach out to me on my website. I think even, um, you know, taking an, any of my technique classes, but taking the Copic class without even owning any Copics and just sitting and listening, you can kind of watch and then buy and then watch again is not a bad idea either. All right, we've got our buttons here. And we can go ahead and shadow all of our buttons at once. Remember, we're just going to do a U because we can spin them and turn them however we want after. Yes, Andrea, any of my online classes, any of these online Create With Us mini classes, once, um, well, the Create With Us is everybody has access anyways, right? Because they're free, so you can watch all the previous ones. And then all of my online classes, you will have access to them to watch over and over again or watch whenever it's convenient for you. So usually my classes take, you know, a full day. But some people will choose to just do it, you know, a half an hour each night after work or something like that. All right. Working our way down the line. Working our way down the line. All right. We've got our ribbon. And I was crazy. I did use two colors. You don't have to if you don't want to. Sometimes when I do these teeny tiny areas, I laugh at myself. But. So I am going to do a very thin line of BG13 at the bottom of the ribbon coming off the spool. And then on the ribbon on the spool, I'm doing a very thin line at the top and a very thin line at the bottom, leaving a little bit of white. Let me try to zoom in there so you guys can appreciate my craziness. Um, it might seem like it's, I mean, again, you don't have to do it. It might seem like it's kind of silly, but it really does. You really will see the definition. All right. So now I'm going to take the BG 11 and just finish filling in this ribbon. And it does, it just has a little bit of definition to it. I just think it looks cute. All right. We've got some finishing touches to do. Let's go ahead and do our brown on our ribbon spool and our bobbins. Um, so I'm going to grab that E33 and the E21 again. Okay. 
All right. Yeah, if you don't make these create with us as when we're live, they live here on Lawn Fawn's YouTube channel. So you can watch them whenever it works and you always can download the handouts. So on these thread spools, you guys, I'm taking the E33 and I'm just doing a thin line hugging where the thread is. And I'm gonna go ahead and do all four. Doesn't have to be straight or pretty, but just try to make it thin so we still have some white space. Then I'm going to take the E21 and honestly just kind of fill in the area, just dab over it a couple times. It's going to soften that E33 enough that it won't look choppy and the definition will still be there and it'll just look wicked cute. Okay. Then we have our top of our ribbon spool, and I thought, you know what, I was crazy enough with the ribbon, I'm just going to do the spool E21. I kept it simple. Okay. Our pins at the top of our pin cushion, dark teal, BG13. So cute. And let's see, I know there's just a couple little things left on the small button jar. I wanted to do an inline with BG10, just like we did with the bigger button jar. And then the last thing, I think it's the last thing, is I'm just gonna take one of my grays um, so T4 or T6, whatever gray you want, and all of these inner buttonholes. I just like to color them. I don't know why. I like to make them look like they're more, they're deep. They have a shadow. And I'm going to do the same thing um, in the jar. And then, you guys, we are going to start to glitter all of the things, although I don't think we're really glittering all of the things, but glitter some things and get to our assembly. Coming right along here. Um, That's a good question. Anything on the needle thread? I did not color the needle thread on my sample but you most certainly could take a light of the pink or the teal and just trace it. Um, definitely, if you wanted to do that. Hello, Danielle. Thanks for popping in to say hi. Always good to see peeps, peeps that take my classes pop in and say hi, even if they can't stay. I love it. All right. All right. Yeah, I think we're good. So now let me just look at my samples and see what I glittered. Oh, yeah. Cute glitter. Okay. So I'm going to take off of my tape a few things. I don't want to take everything off because I don't want to lose them, but I'm going to take all of the teal buttons off. Those are all going to get glittered. And each of the pink buttons, the pink cushion, and the baby button jar. I'm going to leave everything else on the tape because I know myself. Now, before we start glittering, we have a little bit of stamping to do in our embroidery hoop. 
and I just realized I forgot to grab my guava ink. So I'm gonna grab that real quick. And we're gonna get out our So Very Mice stamp set. There's a lot of fun little elements in this stamp set that you could use to stamp on your um, embroidery hoops. But we're gonna put the heart on the one that's facing forward. So this is when I like to use my little block is in my drawer somewhere. And again, I'm going to be using the L'Enfant Guava ink. Um, I think it matches really nicely, but any kind of pinky or pink red will work. And I'm going to use the little stitched heart. We're going to stamp that in the embroidery hoop that's front facing. So I was just at a in-person trade show teaching some lawn fawn classes to retailers and Rebecca will probably get a kick out of the story, but um, Rebecca, you know, was really awesome. She shipped all of the supplies that I needed for my classes. And, you know, some of them had, you know, they had to do some stamping. So she sent some stamp chamois. And I was like, so jealous. I was like, oh, I really need a new stamp chamois. They were so new and nice. <laughs> this one's getting pretty, pretty worn out. Um, I'm almost time for a new one, I think. It's still working fine, but I was having like stamp chamois MV or whatever. All right, then we have the mouse that's stitching on the embroidery hoop. So I'm going to just use that little kind of half circle, quarter circle um, stitching. And I'm going to add that on here. I wanted to get this stamping done because we are going to add a little bit of glitter to our embroidery hoops. And I like to make sure my stamping is done uh, before adding the glitter. All right. Oh, boo to our work night, but I hope it's a busy work night, Danielle. Her and her husband own a restaurant, so, you know, you always want it to be busy. Aw, thanks, Rebecca. I wasn't trying to hint at that, but I was like, I, I just don't think I had seen a clean one in a long time. <laughs> All right, so we are going to glitter some of the things. I'm going to use my favorite Sakura Quickie glue pen. Honestly, I think this is the only glue pen in the world that anybody should have. It's amazing. It does really nice detail. It dries very quickly. And I have Lanfon Prisma Glitter in this container. Um, the container is about five and a half by five and a half. I truly believe you need to have a container that's bigger ish so that you can contain your glitter, right? A lot of people don't like to use glitter because they think it is very messy, but. Um, I'm a good testament. I don't get glitter everywhere very often unless I'm kind of just doing something silly. So um, some of my tips and tricks might help you be able to be a better, a better glitterer. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to use, um, I'm going to do the button, the baby button jar. Um, just on the label, I'm doing the top half of the label, like where there isn't a shadow. I'm just tracing that inner line with the quickie glue pen. And then if you like to use tweezers, now's a good time to use tweezers. I just use my finger or my hand. I dip straight in, straight out. There's a lot of static cling, but I take the pen and I tap it on the edge and it bounces all of that off. And then we have a little bit of sparkle and glitter at the top of the button label. 
Um, I never, ever, ever touch my hands to the glitter. Ever. Ever, ever. On accident sometimes, but I really try to avoid that. All right, on each of these buttons, I am just tracing the highlight of the button. So not where we did the shadow, where we left the highlight at the top. So just a little trace of that inner circle where the shadow isn't. Dip, tap, done. So the three big buttons. And then we have the two medium buttons. I also find tapping the pen on the edge of the cardstock um, really makes a difference versus tapping it with your hand because your hand's soft and the pen is hard. So it's a hard surface to a hard surface and it really taps off that glitter, the static cling glitter. And we got this baby button. If I ever do accidentally drop something in the glitter, I definitely find my tweezers for that. I don't tend to use tweezers a ton, um, but again, if you like to use tweezers, now is a good time to do that. And so the tops of the pins, the teal part of the pins, I'm doing glitter on those, because why not? Who doesn't want sparkly pins? Um, and then we have our big button jar, okay? And same thing, we're going to do just the highlight of the button. So I probably do like two to three buttons at a time and then dip it into the glitter and tap off and then do two or three more buttons. The Quickie glue pen does dry really quick, so I don't do a whole lot of gluing at a time because I don't want to put it into... Um, the glitter and have it be dry. That would be like a waste of time. So a few buttons at a time, dip, tap. All right, who doesn't want sparkly buttons, right? So cute. All right, and then as far as the mice go, um, I'm gonna just gently peel off the two with the embroidery hoop. I have to always gently peel mine off because they've been on the tape for a long, long time, um, since the middle of February. <laughs> And so for the um, embroidery hoop where the mouse is stitching on, I'm just going to do a little bit on the inner bottom circle of that top of the embroidery hoop. And then I'm going to just trace each of the little crease lines around the frame. I'll bring it up to the camera. And I think on my handout, I have told you what I glittered. Um, maybe somebody can tell me in the comments. I didn't print my handout out, but I usually in my classes share with you what I glittered and what I popped up with foam. And then on the embroidery hoop that has the heart, we're going to do again, just a little bottom U on the inner part. Tap it off. Okay. And then last but not least, we're going to add a little glitter to our sewing machine because, you know, if I did actually sew, I would want my sewing machine to be sparkly. So I'm going to do this trim along the center or along the top, that top trim. I'm going to do the highlight of the knob of that circle. 
And then the little rectangle under the circle, I'm filling in completely with glitter. So it looks like this. So fun, right? So cute. All right, I think that is everything that is glittered. Just looking at my samples, making sure. All right, before we start assembling, um, for this card right here, we are gonna do a little bit of um, white embossing. So um, I am going to get out my card kit. And I gave you guys a measurement for some gray cardstock to have ready. I believe this is Storm Cloud cardstock. And I'm just going to put it into my Misty here. And we want um, your amazing. Now I just have to remember which stamp set I got that from. I think I got it from the Sewn With Love. Oh yeah, so you're amazing, okay? And it does not need to be lined. Oh, this is actually a different you're amazing. This is a capital letter you're amazing. Huh. Oh, look at that. So you could use the sewing machine one if you want, but also the How You Bean button add-on has it too. So if you want lowercase, which is what I used on my original card, you can use this one. If you want uppercase, it's on this one. Look at that, the things you learn things you learn when we're in class together here. Okay, I'm gonna use the How You Bean buttons add-on and it. I'm gonna do You're So Amazing all together. I don't wanna cut my stamp apart. I don't mind doing that, but I don't need to because we are going to trim um, these out with scissors. So it doesn't need to be straight or anything, just on the gray cardstock. And so I'm going to do some white embossing and I'm just going to share with you what I like to do for white embossing. Um, but you know, do whatever way you like to do white embossing. I'm going to use the rabbit hole cottontail powder tool. And I am going to use that to just kind of prime my cardstock so that there's no static electricity. And I actually like to use the Lawn Fawn Pigment Ink, the Yeti, um, instead of an embossing ink pad when I'm doing white. I really like to do kind of white on white. So I'm going to use the Yeti ink pad. And I'm actually going to gently, but I'm going to stamp it a few times. I had a feeling my magnet was going to get in the way. All right, I'm going to be daring you guys and do it without the magnet. But I want to um, ink and stamp this. A couple times and the reason why I like to do it a couple times is the first time we stamped it the ink started to soak into the cardstock okay the second time we stamped it it starts to build up the ink and then the third time really leaves that ink sitting on top and then I have my white embossing powder. And I don't like to dip into the powder. I like to take a spoon and pour it on top. I just find that it kind of sits better. 
I had a feeling my your bounced a little bit. I just kind of tap the edge with my spoon. So you can see how my Y bounced a little bit up here. So I'm just going to take a dry paintbrush and get rid of that. This is not the Cottontail, Cottontail Powder Tools fault. It's my fault for um, not having space for my magnet. Okay, so we've got that with the powder on there. You can see I use the same containers that I use for my glitter. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my embossing gun on and let it heat up um, for a, a couple seconds before I add it to my cardstock, okay? It's so funny. Um, I believe it's Shari that said, I just re-inked my Yeti ink pad for one of the videos next week. And it was so juicy. Clearly, I should have done it long ago. Um, Rebecca will remember, I was designing cards for another retailer event. And she did something with the Yeti ink pad. And when I tried to do it with my Yeti ink pad, it like wasn't the same. And it just all came out to being my um, ink pad needed to be re-inked. So here's your PSA of the night. Um, make sure you re-ink your ink pad. All right. So yeah, using the white Yeti ink pad really makes a difference with white powder. And priming your cardstock with a powder tool makes a big difference, makes a big difference. So I'm just gonna set this aside. And now I think we are set up for success. We can start to assemble um, our cards. Um, maybe somebody can let me know what card number this one is on the handout, but this is the one that we're gonna start to assemble first, okay? Um, and so I'm gonna get out all my card pieces for that card. So Andrea is asking, can I clarify what the Cottontail Powder Tool does? And what it does, Andrea, is it kind of, like I, I say, like it primes the cardstock. It is dusting the cardstock, and as it dusts the cardstock, it takes off any static cling that the cardstock might have, um, and it also um, takes any moisture off of the cardstock. I live on Cape Cod in Massachusetts, so we have a lot of humidity, especially in the summer months. And I just find that the embossing works so much better using that. Um, just put my stamps away like the good person that I'm not. Okay. Nobody's telling me what card number this is, but um, I will just let you guys know this is the card we're doing whatever one this is okay uh sherry says that she loves my hoodie but she's wondering if lawn fawn is going to offer t-shirts for the summer i'm not sure about that maybe rebecca can chime in with an answer um for that one all right, so we have an outside in stitched rectangle cut with seafoam spiffy speckles, one of my favorite, favorite, favorite pattern papers. So we're gonna just start by adding that to our card base. I'd like everybody to take note that I am adding something to a card base. Doesn't happen often, you guys. But when it does, I just want to make sure everybody knows. All right. So this is the largest stitched rectangle in the outside in stitched rectangle set. It's Shari's fault that I'm obsessed with it. But it's really nice because it leaves the very perfect little border and also has that really nice little stitching. This is card number one. Thank you, guys. And uh, Rebecca chimed in, no t-shirts, sorry. 
Um, all right, just making sure I'm not missing any questions. And so now I have a piece of, I think this is Lucky Penny Watercolor Wishes. And I was going to measure it for you guys, but why would I have, why would I have a ruler? Well, I'll use my big ruler. So this, and again, this is all in the handout, but this is one and three quarter inches high, but also cut from the outside in stitched rectangle. And we're just going to adhere this to the bottom. So it has that same nice stitching. And now what we're going to do is add our jar. So I'm going to get out my jar, find my lid. I'm going to add my lid to my jar with my glue tube. I'm going to zoom out a little bit more, you guys, and put my card into view. I'm going to try, try this. I'll go this way. So if a little bit of my card is cut off, at least you'll still see what I'm doing. So we're just going to add a little bit of glue tube and add our lid onto our jar. Okay, and I'm going to add some foam squares. To the back of my jar and I just don't want my foam squares too close to the edge because I am going to be tucking some buttons and things behind the jar but I like to get the jar on first all right I'm gonna try to be good and put my little foam squares into my little container we'll see we'll see how long that lasts I love the speckled paper because I speckle like a kindergartner. That's funny. Yeah, the speckled paper is so fun. All right, so we're going to set our jar down. It is to the left a little bit. Okay. And then behind that on the left, we're going to tuck a pink button. So this is now when you want to pay attention to where your shadow is. Um, you probably don't want to put your shadow in the sky. So I'm going to tuck a little pink button there and then my pin cushion is going to go over here. I don't want to put it down yet, but I can tuck a teal button. Right up here and it can float a little bit because the pin cushion will make it a little less obvious that it's floating, right? And I'm going to add some foam squares to the pin cushion. Yeah, lucky penny. I thought it was. I always just doubt myself. I should just be more confident and be like, yeah, I know the name. Okay, and now I should have a pink button somewhere. See, this is the problem. This is the problem. There we go. It's hiding under my mouse. So my, my other big pink button, I'm going to add a foam square and tuck that behind the pin cushion. And I love going off the edge of the outside in stitch rectangle, but keeping it in the card front. I just think that's so fun that you can do that. All right. And then we've got a mouse that's sitting with his thimble. So he is going to go kind of on the jar and the pin cushion, but his bottom is hanging off. So I'm going to put a foam square down by his bottom and then I'll put glue tube up behind his head and the thimble. Okay. 
So now I want to add the letters SEO to the jar, but I want them to be nice and evenly spaced. So I'm going to move a few things out of the way and I'm going to grab my Wendy Vecchi Make Art Station. Love this thing, even though we're not stenciling tonight. I love it for the grid. So if you have some sort of grid mat, you can use that. And I'm just lining my letters up so they're nice and straight and evenly spaced. All right. And then I have some loved and used before best ever craft tape. And so that's a low tack tape. I'm going to just go ahead and press down. And I've picked my letters up all together so that I know that they're nice and evenly spaced. Okay. Now I want my letters to be popped up. Okay. So I am going to use some 3L foam strips and put them behind the letters wherever it's thick enough to have a foam strip. If it's too thin, because these letters kind of um, change, you know, thick and thin, just I don't put foam behind that wherever I can hide it. And then the curved parts, I just kind of cut into little pieces so I can go around the curve of the letter. You could also attach these flat with a glue tube, um, but most of you guys know I like to uh, pop up all of the things. I love that little bit of dimension that you can get. All right. So now that I have my foam strips on my letters, okay, I'm going to bring my card back into place. Oh boy, it's getting messy off, off screen here, you guys. I'm going to gently peel the liner off of my foam because I don't want to peel the letter off of the tape. I love the Make Art Station with stencils. I love it. I love it. It makes me use my stencils so much more. Okay. And so now we want to add our letters to the jar. Okay. I don't, oh, you can see through the, on the camera. So I'm just centering the letters in, within the buttons. And I'm just going to kind of place that tape down and then press where my foam is. And then I'm going to gently pull back the tape. This is the like extra wide best ever craft tape, which I love, but it's definitely stronger. So you just got to be gentle. And there we go. I got my letters all nice and evenly spaced out. Okay. Yes, these are uh, Henry's ABCs. Thank you guys. So now I'm going to go ahead and add my mouse up here. Yep. So anytime like a mouse is on the jar, I don't need to put foam everywhere, but I want to support his head. So I put a foam square behind his head and then I'll put glue tube behind his feet. Okay, and then he's holding some pink scissors. So again, foam is going to go behind the, all of the scissors except for that top loop because the top loop is going to go in his hand. So I'm going to actually use this foam strip. Just making sure I went the right way with the foam strip. 
and I'm just going to dab a little glue right on his hand. And then we'll go ahead and place those scissors. Super cute. All right, so down here in the lower left corner, we're going to do one of our mice that's facing the right. We're also going to do our needle and thread and one of our pink threads. So I'm going to start by, um, actually, I'm going to start by adding the thread. So he's going to go about there. I'm going to cut a foam square in half to put towards the bottom. And then glue tube. I do this a lot. I don't know if you guys do this, where you mix like, half a foam square, half a glue, because it just depends where you're placing it, right? And I want it to be supported. So he's going to go right there. So we're going to do foam along the left side of him. And I love how easy it is to just cut these 3L foam squares in half. Seeing if I'm missing any comments. Rebecca and Shari have been awesome at helping me keep up with them. And we're just going to add him down here. So cute. And then I'm going to add a little bit of glue tube behind this thread and needle. And just place that down like so. Okay. So fun. All right, so we have our little sentiment that we embossed. And so I'm just going to do a little word fetty. This is, I call word fetty. I'm just going to use my scissors and cut these into little blocks. I always say it's kind of like a ransom note, although that is a little like morbid, but yet it's not because sometimes we talk about true crime during my lives. Um, but do think of it like a ransom note. It's not meant to be straight. You could use a paper trimmer if you want, but um, with your scissors, you can get it to look super cute. Just little, little word fetty pieces. So I have your amazing and so I'm going to actually add some foam strips behind these guys. Thank you, guys. I appreciate the kind comments. And so I'm going to tuck Amazing down in here by our little thimble mouse. And we'll add your up here on the jar. So cute, right? And now we just have a little bit of simple stamping. We're going to add like that little word snip by the scissors and some little hearts. Um, I love, I love these little like words. I think it adds so much character. Um, to the cards. So I like to just use the 1.75 inch Lawn Fawn block. It's my favorite one. And I just put snip on one side and the heart, the little tiny heart on the other, just for quickness. We'll do a little snip stamp. If you haven't stamped with the little stamps in a while and you are using an acrylic block, 
I do recommend you just stamp it off on some scratch paper just to get a feel. Um, I was just making cards before this live, so I kind of feel like I'm already warmed up, but I often do stamp um, as a test stamp first. So I'm just adding a few of these little hearts, almost like you would if we were to use sequins. Just a little sprinkling here and there. And then last but not least, we're going to stamp the little swirly heart at the bottom. And for that, that is from the button add-on set. And you could use your Misty, but I think I'm going to be wild and crazy tonight. Kelly would be so proud of me because I'm actually just going to use my acrylic block. A lot of times when I'm teaching live, I, I heavily rely on my Misty, even though when I'm working here in my craft room by myself, I use my acrylic blocks a lot. So, and she and I talk about that during our lives a lot, but I'm going to be wild and crazy tonight, you guys, on this uh, Tuesday night here, and I'm just going to go for it. It's only paper, right? Cute, cute, cute. <laughs> Danielle says that she always forgets to use the little images in the stamp sets. And the only time she does is when I make her. I like that she said I make her. <laughs> make her use them in class. Ooh, the mice going into a movie theater. That would be fun. Kelly could be all about that because her brother is a director. So... I think we should definitely do that. All right, you guys, there is our first card. So cute. You're so amazing. Such a good encouragement card for a friend, right? Or a family member. Love it. All right, let's move right on. Um, I don't know if the heart is the same on the um, mice ice skating set. Might be similar. All right, so card number two is going to be a horizontal card. So I kind of started it the same exact way. We got a good old outside in stitched rectangle. This time I used the um, stripe paper, the yellow stripe paper from the Stripes and Sprinkles uh, 6 by 6 mini pad. And so I'm going to start by adding that to my card base because, you know, card bases are good. For those of you guys that don't know, I often don't get to adding my cards on card bases. And this year, almost all of my Christmas cards went out and I sent about 150 and they went out as card friends. <laughs> I still put them in an envelope, but they were kind of like Christmas postcards because <laughs> I was running out of time and I was like, why did I do this all year? Um, and I do my Get Cracking on Christmas series and yeah, anyways, so I'm trying to get better at putting my cards on card bases. Uh, when I use the outside in stitch rectangle, I have to put it on a card base, so you know. That's my reason, and I'm sticking to it. All right. So, uh, thank you so much, Lori. I appreciate that. Thank you, Nicole. So now we're going to build this scene. And so um, since I've already built the scene and I know where my sentiment's going to go, I'm going to just go ahead and start by adding my sentiment. I probably put the sentiment on at the end when I designed this card because I wasn't quite sure where everything was going to go. I am going to use my Misty for this because I want it to be nice and straight and centered. And we're going to stamp, um, well, you can stamp whatever you want, but I'm going to stamp you mean so much to me. And what's fun course I have a little bit of cat hair 
Mr. Harley and Jack come up on my studio table, so I often will have cat hair. Um, so I have You Mean So Much to Me, and what's great about the Lawn Fawn Sentiments is you can see how I'm kind of tucking them together into one nice long line um, because they're in that block form. They're really easy to touch together and make one long line, and the spacing is all nice. And it looks pretty centered, pretty straight too. I'm good with it. I'm at a little bit of a weird angle. So if it looks crooked to you guys, um, because you're probably looking at it more straightly, don't tell me. Let's just go with it. Ooh. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp that. I'm going to just do it one more time. Um, oh my gosh. My uh, stamp chamois is a little dry. Again, I was working on cards before this live. So, okay, we got that in place. My poor loved black stamp chamois. <laughs> Thanks, Nicole. Okay, here goes with everything. All right. So now we are going to start to build our scene, okay? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of start to just bring in, I mean, it's easy, obviously, when you're looking at a sample already, but when I'm working on it on my own for the first time, I just start to kind of bring in my bigger elements and start to kind of figure out where they're going to go. Okay. And so I'm going to take the sewing machine. And similar to like how we started with the um, jar of buttons, I'm going to add some foam squares behind the sewing machine. But again, I want to kind of keep them centered so that <clears throat> I'll be able to tuck things behind the sewing machine if needed. Oops, I didn't mean to take this little half square. Okay. And so I'm going to just start by adding my sewing machine. And then I'm going to grab the medium little teal button. Again, making sure the shadow is towards the bottom. And then this guy is going to go right here-ish, right? So we're going to put foam towards the bottom. I'm going to actually do half foam squares along kind of the ripple of the embroidery hoop. And then we'll do glue tube everywhere else. I kind of just put it everywhere and wherever it touches onto the sewing machine is going to work. I want them a little bit, a little bit over. There we go. Okay. And now I'm going to add that little button with a little foam. The stripes look different. Um, my stripes might be going, they're going the opposite way. It doesn't matter, Stephanie. It's no right or wrong way. So we're going to add that little baby button. And then I'm going to take a pink thread spool. 
and I did go a little bit farther over, so I'm going to actually probably tuck the spool a little bit differently on this card. Again, it's totally fine. Nobody's going to compare these cards and see if you passed a test, right? Okay, and then we're going to add our two teal spools. So... I'm gonna add a little bit of foam strip at the bottom or on the side of one of these spools because this one's gonna be on its side right along here. We'll add glue tube and we're gonna tuck this one under his tail. And I'll go ahead and add a little half a foam square at the bottom. Glue tube at the top. And this guy will go over here. Just kind of stacking up all the supplies. I was basically trying to envision what my craft table would look like if I was a sewer and I would have stuff everywhere is pretty much what I determined. All right, so we have one more little mouse. Well, one more mouse without an embroidery hoop. And he is going to go here, but we're going to tuck that little jar of buttons behind him. So I'm just going to kind of have him there for spacing. And we're going to tuck. Okay. Now, for this mouse, what I did is I'm actually going to pop up his head, but have his feet go flat, just to kind of give a little bit of different definition. And I'm just going to pierce my glue tube because it has been acting up. There we go. So again, I'm going to put his feet down flat and have his head popped up. And I'm just going to hold this here for a minute just so his feet don't pop back up again. Oh, I leave my glue tube uncapped every night. <laughs> That's probably why it's acting up. But I don't know if you guys can see that on camera, but it's just a fun little way to add a different type of definition where the head is popped up, but the body is flat. All right, so now we'll go ahead and add our embroidery hooped mouse. That's his official term, by the way, embroidery hooped mouse. I'm gonna keep my squares towards the center because we're gonna do some more tucking. Okay. Starting with, we'll tuck our thimble underneath. It's so funny when I think, I'm pretty sure that's Shari that said she left it uncapped the other night. It's, I'll leave my glue tube uncapped all night and then like the next day I'll start working and I get mad that it's like not working. <laughs> and I'm like, I can only be mad at myself, so why am I being mad? All right, we got one more teal button we're going to add in the upper left corner up here. Okay, and then we've got our ribbon and our teal scissors. Now, remember, this best ever craft tape, low tack tape, I am going to use this. It's going to be ripped into pieces to hold my dies in place. I'm actually adding it to my camera stand right now, so I will have it tomorrow. All right, so for the ribbon, I'm going to add just a little bit of foam to reinforce the dangly ribbon part. And then we'll do glue tube.
Okay. And then the scissors. We're going to reinforce the parts that are dangling. Going to kind of remember which parts those are. nice to have the different sized foams to kind of make it work in your favor. All right. I don't want to cover up my ribbon too much. There we go. Oh my gosh, so cute. I love a good lawn fawn scene, you guys. I love it. I love it so fun. This card makes me want to sew. Like if I can hang out with the mice and uh, start sewing, I, I'd be good, right? Look at that. Yay, yay, yay. Awesome. Well, you guys, I want to thank you so much for joining me sticking with me, even though uh, Kelly was not here tonight. I know we all missed her. Uh, we talked a little bit about uh, tomorrow, so make sure you guys are watching your inboxes uh, for a very fun email from Lawn Fawn, and definitely check that out to be able to support some really awesome stores. And then we talked about how we have a mini release coming out in May. The mice are going to continue to lead their best lives ever. And then our summer release will be in late June. So I hope you guys had so much fun. I just threw up the uh, graphics for my upcoming classes. So, so amazing, as you guys can see, are using a lot of the supplies that we use today in class. We are going to do a pull and pop card. You're going to get some more coloring guides and some more ideas. We make three cards in class, and then I give you two more bonus cards, plus the two cards we made tonight. So it's a ton of fun ideas. And so that class will be live with me on April 29th or you can take it any time after that that works into your schedule. And then I also have my Copic 101 online class coming up on May 6th. And workbooks are going to ship out for that class um, so that we're all coloring the same images. I actually commissioned uh, Angie Blom. Some of you guys might know her. She does beautiful stamps and digital designs. And so she um, drew some artwork specifically for me for this Copic 101 class. So I'm very excited. Um, and we will have, and by we, I mean Kelly and I will have another Create With Us class um, around the May release. We will um, announce all those details on the release day in May. So you'll be able to get your handout, see what supplies we're using and see the date. And then of course we'll do um, at least one create with us with the summer release. So lots and lots of fun. So Chris just said, does anyone use black glaze pens for critter eyes? I seem to get burned by them often when they blurp. I even tap them off. I'm ready to blurp them onto some scrap paper and use a toothpick or pen instead. So Chris, I don't often use the black glaze pen on critter eyes, especially lawn fawn critter eyes, because it is a pretty bold, juicy glaze pen. Um, but it's awesome for critters' noses um, and for um, like bumblebee stripes and things like that, but I don't tend to use it on their eyes because I have that same problem. It's not a very fine, detailed um, pen. Um, let's see. Oh, Joanne, I am very sorry for your loss, and I'm happy that you joined us tonight and you got some smiles and some laughs. That's always really nice to do. The best ever tape is great. Just started using it tonight. Happy to hear that, Chris. Yeah, I really like the best ever craft tape. Good to see you, Penny. 
I saw you had all your images stamped out. Hopefully you got them all colored and assembled. Um, I'm just going to scroll up for a second to see if I missed any questions. Thank you guys so much for the sweet comments. And yes, we all hope Daphne feels better soon. Thank you. Yes, the rabbit tail powder tool is good when you're making shaker cards to dust the edges of the foam tape for sure, for sure. Um, and our teasers that Kelly um, allowed me to say is that the mice are going to continue to live their best life ever in the May release. And if you like things that fly or go in the sky, you'll like the May release. So that's it. I don't want to get myself in trouble. I want to be invited to the next Create With Us. Um, but anyways, you guys, thank you so much for joining me tonight. Shari and Rebecca, thank you for moderating the chat. I appreciate you guys. And I can't wait to see you guys in an upcoming